forsake us and we are grateful that you are your eyes are over the righteous and your ears are open to their cry. You told us to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. Jesus, we bring these petitions and all of the needs. We recognize the time that we're living in is late. We know, Jesus, that you're coming sooner than any of us here can even realize we see the handwriting on the wall concerning the end times that were spoken by the prophets. Now, Lord, you said that when you see these things and all of these troubles, look up for our redemption draws nigh. Lord, while all of these things come upon the wicked, let the righteous look up. Let them find redemption. Let them find healing and strength. In these times, thank you, Father, as you give us an example in the Bible. You told Peter to come, walk out there on that water to meet you. As long as he has his eyes upon you, he was doing it. But Lord, when he got his eyes off of you, start seeing the storms. The winds, the, all the turmoil, he began to go down. But he got close enough to you where he would pray, Lord, save me. God, help us to keep our eyes on you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Laying aside all weights and the sin that have hindered us. Building up on this foundation of the apostles, prophets, Jesus, you being the chief cornerstone, have mercy upon the body of Christ, all the different churches, all the different places where your people are gathered together. Lord, touch and heal their bodies, strengthen them, bring them through their afflictions and hardships. Help your people to rise above the storm and soar like an eagle. In Jesus' name, we love you and we thank you. Touch and answer these requests. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate the Lord. Amen. Everybody here with us today. Lord. It's been a, a good week. God is really helped us. You know, tonight, I want to go into, we don't go into part one of it today, but tonight I really want to go into a part that I feel like we need to hear uh, concerning the uh, ministry of Jesus. Amen. I want to go into some of these, you know, I was telling her, Wendy, I appreciate her, you know, even though she's uh, going through uh, some things along with the whole church, you know, but yet she gets on this organ and stays faithful. Yes, amen. She's here, yes. you know, opening the church up. Yes. And uh, in the uh, other areas, she's helping us. So I'm grateful. Her mother would be so proud amen. to see her continually, yes. you know, like she's doing right now. Amen. And I appreciate the testimonies. Glad to have my sister here with us. Amen. 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 Who's the baby? Susie, Susie you know what I mean? Which one of us is the baby? Okay. <laughs> she's alive, but she's that's my baby sister, you know. Uh, Deborah. Y'all know Deborah, don't you? Yes, sir. Everybody knows Deborah. <laughs> and uh, she may come down a little bit. For a while. Maybe I can get Deborah good and saved when she get get her back saved. Amen. <laughs> but Deborah was in with us for, for years. And she knows the foundation. Talked to him the other day. She said, Dwayne, you know, Brother Terrell prophesied these things in the natives. And we see an order that coming to pass right now. <laughs> so that word, you know, is still inside of her. 
and uh, pray for uh, all of them. But Susie, she faithfully listens and, uh, and follows us online. Um, I mean, on Sunday morning, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Tuesday night, Monday night, she's right there listening. And uh, now she's right here in, the, in our presence, right here with us. I'm glad she'll be with us for another week. I'm so glad to, for her to be here. At, like she said, not necessarily under these circumstances, but still, nevertheless, I'm um, glad to have her here with us. And uh, I do appreciate all of your faithfulness and all of you, your prayers and everybody that have really got it in, stood with us during these times. We want you to know we appreciate it so much. And uh, but we're going to go into a few scriptures here in just a moment. But I'm glad. I do want to say this. If in this world only, you know, we had hope. Of all people, we'd be most miserable. And our hope goes beyond this natural world. And, uh, you know, God put us on this earth for a reason. And when, when, when you hear me, you hear me say this a lot. Your eyes haven't seen. Your ears haven't heard. You haven't entered into your hearts. But God has prepared for them that love Him. How many of y'all heard me say that? But you know that, that that has a lot of truth to it. Because God got plans for us that haven't really entered into our hearts. That goes beyond this life. I mean, in this life, there's going to be the greatest revival the world has ever witnessed. And that's right upon us too. Along with the hardships and persecutions, but we were just before one of the greatest revivals that this world has ever witnessed. But even beyond this life, God has something so special for us. I mean, it would shock your imaginations. Your mind just ain't big enough to think of what all God's got for you. You can't fit into our finite minds, the plans, the purposes, not just here, but throughout eternity. Can I, can I throw a little hint to you? I'll start with uh, Lucifer. <laughs> I'm sure y'all read about him in Jeremiah and over in Isaiah. Zippel, some of these uh, prophets. They give us a little, little glimpse about how that, you know, when God created Satan, he was Lucifer. He was the bright and morning star, wasn't he? Yep. And God created him and every instrument, every musical instrument was created in him. He was created so perfect. And all the angels had to come through him. He was a high priest in heaven. You couldn't get to God except you come through Him. He was created so perfect and so beautiful. And when angels and spirit beings would come to God, it would all have to come through Him. And, and all of their praises to God had to come through Lucifer. And somewhere Somewhere it got to his head thinking that there was all the praises was coming to him. But there wasn't. He was just the high priest absorbing these things and, and his purpose was to present them before God. And how had thou fallen, O Lucifer? And I mean God if God created him perfect. And he had a lot of them angels looking to him, thinking that he, you know, how can a created being think that he can rise above the one that created him? But somewhere 
You know, when, when you when, when somebody gives you something, you ain't got to pay for it. Naturally, you don't take it. Um, you don't take it serious because it was given to you. And you don't take that position. He didn't take that position that was given to him. He didn't take it serious enough. And that's how the devil snuck in. Disobedience. Didn't give God the praise that he was supposed to do, give. That's why it's so important to have an obedient spirit. More than anything else, we need to walk in obedience. Because when it's all said and done, that's what's going to be tested in your life, is your obedience, your allegiance, your loyalty. When you have to bow down, when you have to buy, when you can't buy and sell, except you take the uh, mark of the beast, who are you going to give your allegiance to? And so make sure, I want to be preaching on that one of these Sabbath mornings, on how important it is for us to get in here and get a spirit of obedience. And that's why he failed. Lucifer failed. That's why he failed. And can you imagine a king and high priest unto God fall from that position in the garden? Fall from that position to, to what he has fallen to today. The reason why he's mad at you, and after, after your soul, because God is replacing that position, and he's going to put you in that position that Satan, Lucifer, was in. Bible says you're going to be kings and priests unto God. That's right. That's what it says. And the devil knows that, and he, he knows why he messed up and why he failed. And, and he don't want to see, he's jealous, envious. He don't want to see you in that position where he once was in. And, and this, you know, and this time God is putting us down here on earth to teach us obedience. Yeah. To teach us submission. Yeah. Things won't just be handed to us and we just lose it. And he'll allow us to go through things down here. Allow us to be tried, to be put through things so that we won't take for granted the position that Satan is Satan took for granted and fell from. But we'll love him and we'll honor him and we'll obey him in every way. Amen. And that's why the devil is after you because he don't want to see you get that position. Kings and high priests. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be judges over angels. Right. Did you know that? Amen. Bible says, worlds without end. There's worlds out there without end. Thank you, Jesus. Your eyes haven't seen what God's got to pray for you. Right. Have it in it into your heart. Your heart just ain't big enough to contain all the plans that God has for you. My thoughts of you is not to destroy you, but to give you an expected end, to give you hope, to give you something to strive for, to press for. And the things that you're going through right now are no comparison to the glory that's going to be revealed. These little hardships, these little trials, these little things we're going through now is nothing compared to the glory that's going to be unveiled in us if we stay faithful. Yes. Stay faithful. Your eyes ain't seen what God's got for you. Y'all believe it? Amen. Yes. I don't care. Don't you ever fail God. Never turn your back on God. Amen. Never. Because you can gain the whole world. What good would it be like Michael Jackson did, like Prince did, like Whitney Houston did, 
my dad was pressing. What good would it be to, to gain the fame, the fortune, the, the whole world? You know, Michael Jackson sold his soul to the devil where he could uh, do that moon, that, that moonwalk. Y'all remember that moonwalk that he did? Demons came and told him, if you sell your soul to us, we will make you famous. And they put that, they gave him that talent. They gave him that, and that's why, you know, he climbed so out, but look at how he's falling now. Now those demons, same demons, is doing that moonwalk around him in hell. You know, y'all know. They're doing the same thing around him in hell. It's not worth it. As long as you got breath in your nostrils, always remember you got a chance of making it out of this world and going to heaven if you repent. I'm talking up to the last breath. If you ask, if you've sinned and done something wrong, up to the last breath in your body, you you repent. Ask God, have mercy on me. Different ones that we think that. Then we have questions about whether or not they made it or not. You know, don't judge nothing before the time. You're liable to see them people in heaven that you think didn't make it. That's true. Right. Because God loves us to the very last breath in our... That's right. He loves you to the very end. Yeah. So never, I don't care if you breathe in your last breath, let it be. Lord have mercy. And he'll, help, he'll remember it. But if you breathe your last breath and don't ask God to forgive you and you got something in your life, once that last breath leaves your body, you know, ain't no more hope for you throughout eternity. If you die in sin, if you die without asking for Jesus to save you, for, forgive you and have mercy on you. So take advantage of this salvation that God gives us and realize that you're not just put on this earth just to, just like I was preaching Tuesday night, make your calling and election sure. Go back and get that message and listen to it. And uh, hopefully we pick it back up this coming Tuesday. Making your calling and election sure. You find out you're not just called to come to church uh, just to be saved, but you're called to be a disciple. Yes. A disciple is a follower. A follower is a learner. A learner becomes a practitioner and become a doer. You're called to learn of Jesus, to follow him, and to practice what he did. Amen. That's right. Not just to come to church. Not just to be saved. But we are called, the high calling of God is for you to walk in the same example that Jesus brought. Do the same works that Jesus done. This is the high calling of God for your life. A lot of people are going to miss that calling. And uh, they'll make it to heaven, but they don't make it with the kind of reward that they should have had. Because they didn't walk in the full castle. In the full light. Am I talking over your heads? No, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we're going to, uh, I'm going to receive the offer. We're going to read a few scriptures here. But I, don't, I didn't mean to go into all of that. <laughs> but your salvation is. Your soul is worth more than anything on this world. More than anything that the devil offers you in this world. So it's like I was telling some people. Uh, Sister Tanner was leading song service, I believe, Tuesday night. And she was giving some exaltation about something about, uh, uh, what was that you're saying about? Thank you. About how that the, uh, more to God than these material things and all this natural stuff and the devil the devil 
I'll give you all that stuff like I was saying about Michael Jackson and all that. But yet, he can't give you eternal life. That's right. And uh, I was telling people, that's true, the devil can bless us. Listen to what I'm finna say. The devil can bless us. I've seen it happen in the 80s and 90s. How that Satan told Jesus, you fall down, you, you worship me. I give you the world is mine to give you. That's right. God didn't give that authority to the devil. Adam did. Adam is the one who gave Satan. God gave man dominion over everything on this earth. And man turned around and gave it to the devil. And now the devil said, I'll make you rich. I'll give you this. I'm God of this world. I can do it. You know, he can, he can, um, he make people, he, he, people get deceived in so many ways, thinking that uh, gain is, is, is godliness. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Gain is not necessarily godliness. People think because you got this and you got that, you got God. Not so. The devil have blessed preachers with big churches, big crowds. But yet, what price did they have to pay? Compromise. Lower the standards. Getting people off the right foundation. And getting them on a worldly foundation. That's the price that they paid to have big ministries. And to have big crowds. Satan can deceive you and bless you with, Satan can bless you with churches. Satan can bless us with Riches. Satan can bless us with all these things. But if God is not in it, you better be careful. That's why set your hearts on things above. Where Christ sits at the right hand. Don't set your affections on things down here. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Huh? Because these things will deceive you. Never always love God. The First of all, love Him with all your might, all your strength, and all your life. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, but never put these material things and let them substitute what you have in God. Yes. You know, I appreciate the 51 years of relationship that I had with my wife. And you know, you can have all types of relationships with a father, with a mother, with a sister, with a brother, a son, a daughter. But all these relationships comes to an end. Did you know that? That's right. Every one of them comes to an end. The only relationship that lasts forever is the one you have with God. That's right. All other relationships comes to an end. You know, I mean, down here, I know some of y'all, when you get to heaven, you're probably uh, thinking uh, that you can, we're going to be known as we're known down here on earth, aren't we? But all these relationships in the natural, they have their limitations. They have their end. You can be married to somebody for 75 years, but somewhere it'll come to an end. You can live down here on this earth. I heard somebody living 121 years. You can live to be 121 years old. And yet, it'll have its limitations. One thing don't have its limitation. And that is that relationship that you find in Jesus. It will never wait. It will never uh, come to an end. All flesh is grass. The glory of man is a flower of grass. The grass withered, the flower faded, but he that abides in the word will live forever. And that's what we're here for. That's why God put us here to teach us how that we can be kings and priests. The kingdom of heaven is like unto heaven up there. You know, in other words, God wants us to recognize that if you're going to get to heaven, you've got to be holy. So to get to heaven, you got to be holy. 
and, and, and you got to live holy down here on earth. Right. You can't live one life here and think you can live another life up there. The kingdom of heaven is like unto, you know, a person that has been born again. I mean, he gives us all kinds of examples that the kingdom of heaven is not likened unto carnality, not likened unto lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Kingdom of heaven is like is righteousness, holiness, godliness. Can't live one thing down here and expect when you get to heaven it's gonna change. So like I tell people, you can't, you know, mark of the beast come. There's no way that you can. Jump into spirit, jump into faith, and overcome him. You'll fall flat on your face. Learn now to pray. Learn now to, to, to live by faith. Learn now to be an overcomer in these areas in your life. If you learn this now, then when all of this hits us, you won't be the first one to take the mark of the beast. But learn now. To say no to the devil. Learn now to turn your back on temptation. It ain't something you can just jump into overnight when all of this hits us. You will just jump into a faith life. You live by faith now. If you're faithful in the little things, then you're going to be uh, rewarded. And God said, I'll bless you in the bigger things, greater things. But if you're failing every test, and if you're not faithful, can't serve God, can't trust God now, don't think you're going to do it when you can't buy, when you can't sell. You'll, go, you'll be the first one to take the mark of the beast. Well, get your house in order while you can. Get your prayers in order. Get your life in order. You're here temporarily. And that's the test you judge you and see if you're going to be worthy enough to reign with him as kings and priests. You never read in the scripture in Revelation where it said, To him that overcome, will I grant to sit with me in my throne? And as I overcame, you know, you, and, and you're reigning and rule, reign and rule with me. Well, maybe some of y'all just want to be a doorkeeper in heaven. Maybe I'm just on the outer edges of heaven. You know. I remember, I'll say this a little, but I remember, um, I remember um, a man of God was saying something about another minister. He was said he saw this minister die, and at the moment of his death, he saw this minister trying to crawl back into his body. He said the minister made it to heaven, but he saw where he lost his reward. And he was doing everything he could, trying to crawl back into his body. But he lost his reward. You don't want to go to heaven just, and just, you know, like this song they sang, when I get to heaven, I'm just going to walk around heaven. All, what you going to do when night comes? Ain't no light in heaven. You gonna walk around heaven in eternity and not do nothing but just fly around? No, God's got plans before beyond anything we can imagine. Yes. See, God got things planned for you throughout eternity. There's no end to God. There's no beginning to God. There's no end to God. And when we enter into that eternal realm, we're gonna find out. But there's more to God than what the eye have even seen. That's right. Amen. 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 Anyway, let's stand on our feet. We're going to go ahead and receive the offering, but be faithful to God, church. Yeah. Yeah. Be faithful to God. Stand on. Father, we thank you.